Hello, Acorn fans! This is Cherry 33 bringing you a match, second tournament match from round one of the latest beta tournament on July 17th, 2011. This is Haiku versus Hisui. Haiku is in the east position playing Grekum, and Hisui is in the west position playing Siso. So this is a Grekum versus Siso match. This should be a lot more interesting than Grekum versus Grekum, which we've seen very much of, which is an interesting match, but we've seen a lot of it. So let's see Grekum versus Siso. I actually haven't seen the Siso a lot in any games recently, but I have seen Grekum a lot, so. Like I said before, Grekum does this a lot for the Arcticus because the Arcticus being in front allows for units coming in to hit the Arcticus and not the Triad. As a result, the Triad becomes less vulnerable, and of course, because the Triad is now less vulnerable, it is not going to be allowing for as much undermining, it's not going to be allowing for many paradoxes, it really protects the base. However, it doesn't look like he's, Haiku's actually going for that, instead he's putting his Arcticus well, he may be going for that, but he's going for it very interestingly. He's actually putting his Arcticus in in the middle of this set of buildings right here. So I guess he's banking on the idea that his opponent is going to be just running through the middle here to get to his base instead of trying to run. And, oh my goodness, he's going for a heavy rush, too. So it looks like he's going for a very heavy rush near the present. It's not going to be super effective yet because it's not going to be near the UPP. But still, a very good scouting rush at the very least to get some initiative and to keep Hisui on his toes. And the Arcticus here... Like I said, it's right in the middle of all these buildings here, and it's a very defensible position. But I don't know, because it's very easy to get units around the other sides, which will make the Arcticus rather useless rather than being in the base. However, the rush is coming in, so the Arcticus is getting a lot of damage. Hisu's going to have to deal with this Arcticus very quickly. However, an ATHC coming in, the ATHC cloaks, which it probably will, and actually Hisui jumping back. So, seeing with Hisui's point of view during this attack, Hisui has actually changed around, but he is cloaking the ATHC, so we'll be able to deal a lot of damage, help get rid of these Arcticus very quickly. The Marine in front is getting killed, but two ATCs cloaked will be able to take care of these Octos very quickly. However, this may still slow down Hisui because that is most a lot of his Marines dead, his, SO, his SOP's dead, and so he's going to have fewer RP builders, and actually looks like he currently only has two RPs built anyway. He went for a very quick rush himself, though. Very interesting, both players going for very, very, very fast rush strategies. Haiku is jumping back to the start of the game and switching, so Haiku is race switching entirely, so very, very cute little strategy right there. So going to Grekum and then going Siso after a bit of a rush to keep Haiku on, or Hisui on his toes. So Hisui is rushing back in with ATHCs, counterattacking. So Haiku is going to have to deal with this when it comes in. Of course, when he if he's when he's playing Siso, he will be able to quickly build a factory if he realizes that there's an ATHC rush coming. About it's about 2 minutes up from where we are as the ATHC rush starting. And if he realizes it's coming, he should be fine and should be able to get a factory and should be able to get I don't know if you get machinery in time, but at the very least, he has SOPs. And the SOPs can detect. If he gets enough SOPs up, gets a couple importers, he should be able to hold off or at least detect the ATHCs, helping his Marines to hold them off. However, he is checking to make sure that when he's Grekum, he does see the attack coming in when he's Grekum. And, of course, Hisui right now doesn't realize that there's been a race switch going on. So Haiku right now is still attacking with some of his Grekum units that were here from before. Dealing some damage to the base, of course, that will not exist. That will be all undone. But the attack on the attack from Hisui onto Haiku is still happening. And that's going to be where there's a slight problem. Because the thing is, for Haiku, as we see, the red time wave is carrying the fact that Haiku is actually playing CISO now instead of Grekum. And, of course, like I said, he gets a factory. He might be able to get machinery. He has the resources to get machinery. But he'd also need a QP to get a Tornado if he wants to have a really safe detector. He is getting QP RPs right now. He's got 6 LC, 2 QP. Hisui at the... I had about actually three minutes up from here. He's actually taking a lot of damage from the Gre from the to be non-existent Grekum units of Haiku, but it, I'm not sure how much it matters. I can't really tell how many RPs he would have had. However, given his main strategy, it looks like he was primarily going for LC focus and just trying to basically build a rush off of his opening build. So really, this is a rather cheesy build from I guess it's a cheese from Hisui. And at the same time, Haiku's build is more just a cute build. But of course, now Hisui. Hisui, right at the right time of, will see that everything that he was fighting is actually no longer there. Just completely echoed out the entire race playing Grekum. So once his red time wave comes along, he'll see his RPs are back. So he has two LCRPs, one QPRP. Still not a lot, but enough to maintain the forces he has, apparently. And, of course, because he wasn't able to build because he didn't have the RPs before, he will be able to get around. But still, the rush has to be very effective. So how do you have this right comes in? He has an ATC, he has a couple SOPs, he has a couple Marines. But he's going to really need... Oh, he has a mech, too, so that'll take care of the Lancer very helpfully. But he's going to need machinery, he's going to need Tornads, he is getting an ATHC, he's getting a defense turret, which is also something very useful. So the ATHC is coming in, one of the ATHC is dead, Two, the second ATHC is going to die, third ATHC is coming in, 
and will be finished up very quickly as well. So all the ATHCs were moving in rather than attack moving in. So presumably he's is changing that right now, changing their orders to attack move instead of move. Although it doesn't look like it right now. He probably is going to be doing that very soon because that would be the best idea right now. Because they look like they were just moving in and not attack moving in. And the problem, of course, is that if you just move in, then you deal no damage. So as a result, Haiku is, has, as far as we can tell right now, but of course an attack is coming in that will change this once the screen time wave comes in. And the attack is coming in. Hisui, I'm just going to jump from Hisui's point of view. This is about five seconds down. Hisui is attacking with his forces properly. He does see the ATHC coming in, and it looks like Haiku is going for a counter-counter rush with his proper CISO race, and he's going to be coming in, not dealing a whole lot of damage. One of the ATHCs, I think, is dead, but the other ATHC is not going to die, and it's going to be able to finish them off. But an ATHC coming in as well from Haiku will help out. However, further back in time, yes, this is the attack, so this is just reviewing the attack. So... Further back in time, he's just jumping back to see if there's anything he can do. But no, there isn't too much he can do right now. He needs to get... He doesn't have machinery. He doesn't have a lot of resources to really push forward. And he doesn't have any detectors except for the SOP, which has just been killed. So now... Actually, that was a Marine. The SOP hadn't been killed a while ago. There's a SOP right now. So he jumped... He's jumped a bit. But right now, Haiku is apparently actually undoing that attack entirely. He's just going for a bit of a counter rush to put some pressure. Keeping Hisui on his toes, which he's been doing all game since the very start, as we saw. And right now, Tornods are coming out, so the HFCs will be no longer useful in this game. Tornods are detector units and bombers, so they will be able to deal enough damage to the HFCs to completely finish them off. So Hisui's attacks, any attacks he do right, does right now, is about 45 seconds down from when we were. He's sending out the attack that we were just seeing that was going to be hanging out at the edge of the base of Haiku, and it's probably a bad idea to go for it right now. He really needs to start building up some RPs. He doesn't have a lot of resources for it, though. He should probably move this RP to LC and then keep a Marine at home or build a Marine at home and have it start building RPs because right now he really doesn't have a good position and he doesn't have a lot of units right now. He's got a lot of units that are going to be countered very hardly by the Tornados because the Tornados, like I said before, bombers and detectors, ATHCs have no chance against them. Also, defense turrets coming in and here we are. One of the ATHCs is being killed. The other ATHC is coming down around the south to make sure there are no expansions down here. But unfortunately for him, Haiku has not actually built any expansions. He's built or at least no expansion in the south, he's built them all in the north. So, Hisui actually guessed wrong in this one, and Haiku actually has a couple macro fabs about 45 seconds up from what we were looking at. He has a couple macro fabs, he has his factory, he has all the units he had before, and of course the ATHCs will be dealing no damage. He's jumped back about a minute, just to double check, the attack coming in is not going to deal any damage, and of course it will not deal any damage, because it's all ATHCs against Tornads and Defense Turrets, it's going to be doing nothing. However, he's also double checking from the looks of it, just to make sure he has some defenses on the side, but of course Hisui is sending in cloaked units, if he's sending units at all, However, Hisui is, in fact, retreating, which would be the wisest move right now. Retreating, regrouping. He might be able to use the ATHCs later on for some just UPP attacks when there's not as much cloak defense. But right now, there's way too much cloak defense. ATHCs are not going to be any use at all. So he's building a Marine, and once he gets up enough LC, he'll probably be building up some RPs because that's what he really needs right now. He should probably move this over, and he's converting... Okay, he is converting QP to LC. That works, too. Not quite what is effectively in the long term, but really what he needs now is a short term boost to his economy because he is very sore. He has very little in the way of economy. That rush, that I guess you could call it a cheese build, really. Th that all in did not pay off. He's not completely all in, though, because he did lose. And I guess it's not. Okay. It's debatable whether or not it's a cheese build, but that's not important right now. What's important is that the rush was not totally successful, and Haiku actually is sending in a counter rush, a highly successful counter rush of his own with Lancers. Or, no, sorry, a highly successful at poking counter rush. But of course, there's only two RPs anyway. Haiku is in a very powerful position. He has he has six LC and two, three QPR in his main, and two and three in his expansion. And he actually has a second expansion of the south, or looks like he's about to get a second expansion of the south. Hisui, on the other hand, even without the Lancer poking at him, has three. This is and this is actually about half a minute into the future. He has three LCRPs, one QPRP, and hardly anything to show for it apart from that. So the Lancer poke wasn't too effective, but it did show. Haiku, that he is in a very good position economically, assuming, and rightly assuming, that there's no expansions to the north or south from Hisui's position. So Hisui needs to start building up more economy. He's building economy as best he can. He's trying to actually get... Yes, he's getting machinery as well. This may not be the best time to do that, but of course he does need to get something to fight what might be detectors coming from Haiku. He doesn't know for sure, but of course there's always the possibility. However, macrofabs are what have been built, and from there frigates will be built. So it looks like... Haiku's assuming Hisui's going to go going for air a lot more than he actually is. Hisui, of course, isn't actually going for anything. This is about a minute and a half towards the future. And he has one Lancer. He's getting a Tornot. He is going for a bit of air, but 
not really that much compared to what a frigate would be able to handle, or a few frigates would be able to handle that Haiku is building. And Haiku, of course, like I said, a minute and a half down from Hisui's position. He has Mars, he has frigates, he has, he has a very good army. Really, all he needs to do right now is to attack, and Hisui really doesn't have the resources. He can't get chronoporting. He does have a fairly large army coming in, but remember, these ATHCs are fairly weak to being detected at all. And the Tornados and Lancers, his best hope right now would be to probably go north, attack the expansion, at least poke it out, and maybe damage it a bit. But Haiku, Haiku just double checking the unplayable pass to make sure that he's in a good position. He doesn't have chronoporting, by the way, so he's not going to be able to actually chronoport any units back. But he does have enough resources that he could get chronoporting pretty quickly if he wanted to. And he has a fairly, he fairly healthy army. He probably could do with some more. He's getting more units for one of the macro not the other. He does have Smart Out as well. He has a comp center, so he's making full use of the abilities, or partial use of the abilities, but auto hierarchy is something you don't always want to use. It automatically generates hierarchies for your units, but you may not want the hierarchies it gives you. So Hisui is coming in with an attack toward to the but it's actually being undone in the future. He's apparently had attacked earlier and now he's attacking a bit later. And that attack I don't imagine will be especially successful. Haiku of course, he is further in the past than Hisui, and he is able to build a lot more units, has more resources, he can get chronoporting whenever he wants, he could get anything whenever he wants, he, he could get a carrier if he wanted, honestly, and that would be very effective artillery. But yeah, and he is getting gate tech, so he is going to be getting a chronoporter or teleporter, probably chronoporter given the size of this map, very quickly, although a teleporter would allow him to get instantly into the base of Hisui, but a chronoporter would be a lot better for just completely messing around with Hisui's day. So, Haiku coming in, coming in, the forces are engaging, the ATCs are not doing very well, the Frigate is going to be able to take care of this Lancer very quickly, the Tornod also doing a lot of damage, the Mara will be a bit of an asset if it stays alive, but I don't know how well it will stay alive, it's on the front line, and the Tornod right here will be able to take care of it if it targets it, and I'm sure Hisui will be very eager to target the Mara tank coming in, because that is a very juicy target. However, the Tornod does also need to stay alive, needs to avoid the Frigates, because the Frigates come in and destroy the Tornod, the ATCs will be detected, and the Frigates coming in to destroy the Tornod first, the Tornod's actually going for going for the infantry, which didn't do any good, and right now the Mara is just completely wiping out all the infantry coming in right now. Nothing is going really well for DC around. He has too many ATCs, not enough. I don't really what he could build at this point. Although he did get rid of the Tornod, so the ATCs will be effective. However, the forces are just going through, not even acknowledging the ATCs existence, and it's rushing through, attacking the base directly. The Mara tank really is the big asset. That needs to be able to get in. That needs to be able to harass, but it looks like Hisui actually managed to lose his ATHCs later. Oh no, he actually managed to counterattack the ATHCs, so both players are going for counterattacks. However, the ATHCs will be doing nothing at all. The defense turrets are going to be way too effective against the ATHCs for that to work. So he is trying to do a direct attack, but it won't be any good. He's undoing this and now going back to try to just fight off in the middle of his mace. However, he doesn't have much of a defensive advantage because he has no turrets, he has no real production going on right now. So he's in a very bad spot. Forces coming in from Haiku. The Tornod really needs to be the juicy target, but the is not being targeted fast enough. The Tornod of... It looks actually both Tornods are being attacked very slowly, so this Mar tank will likely be destroyed in a hurry. And yes, it is going to be destroyed right now. So the Mar tank is gone. The artillery is has been reduced, but the ATCs are also being destroyed very quickly. And this is about the last revision that anyone can make other than chronoporting. So it looks like there's really not much that any player can do right now other than... Well... Other than try to attack each other's base directly, and that is exactly what Hisui's trying to do, but he doesn't have any units to do it with at this point in time. And Haiku, yes, coming in. Haiku has managed to push back through all the ATHCs. He actually does have Gate Tech. He doesn't have a Chronoporter really necessary. He has a Chronoporter setting up, but he doesn't have one set up yet. However, it's not necessary right now. And as you can see, that was a very interesting build from Hisui. Very cute build from Haiku with the Grekin. And I think his overall economy style played off a lot better because Hisui, his rush in the opening worked decently well, but it didn't. It didn't work because he didn't have enough resources to begin with. And unfortunately, he didn't have anything at that point to really support his attack. So Haiku was able to come in and deal a lot of damage. And the army had, took a while to build up. And Haiku, of course, could get his defenses up. He could get his expansions up. He could get a lot of production capacity up. So, I mean, even if this attack was fended off, there's so much production capacity coming in from Haiku right now that he'd be able to just macro up this army right back and be able to completely take care of this. So... Heisui realizes that he surrendered, good game, and thank you for watching.